Good evening, everyone. This is the Black Post. This evening, the message will be sent. Why does God let the devil, Satan, demons exist? Why does he allow it to exist? He's all knowing, he's all powerful, and he is omnipotent. Why does he allow the devil, the demon, and Satan to exist? You know he didn't he didn't have a good response, right? I don't even recall what he said. Then I said, I got one better for you. I said, can we agree that God is all powerful, omnipotent, all knowing? He said, yes. I said, so first of all, let's let's put the premise down. There's over 4,200 religions in the world. Over 4,200 religions. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,200. Over 4,200 religions. If you was born in India, wouldn't you be Hindu most likely? If you was born in Korea, Japan, wouldn't you be Buddhist most likely? If you was born in the Middle East and Northern Africa, wouldn't you be Muslim most likely? But he sent out disciples everywhere. I said, okay, cool. Okay. They just define the word of God. So where did the word of God come from? Oh, it was, no, no, no. What country? It came from Europe. Now, everybody believes that the Bible has essentially derived from one of the religions that were in Africa at the time, right? Because we all know that Catholicism, Catholics, their religion is based off Egyptology from Egypt. Okay, cool. With all the different cardinals and bishops and blah, blah, blah. You're right. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? So for all of you guys out there who consider yourself a Christian, I want to have you to know, here's a huge announcement, and you never really thought about it like this. I promise you, most of you have never thought about it like this. So get your, get your emojis ready. God created the heavens and the earth. They said that essentially the world, the earth was void. If God is the creator of all, he created light and darkness. Didn't, wait a minute, what is Lucifer? Lucifer is essentially a fallen angel because he wanted to be like God, jealous of God, and all the people who followed Lucifer fell from heaven. I don't know if they cut their wings off for nothing, but they fell from heaven. God created good and evil. God created good and evil. If you believe in the Christian faith, if you believe in the holy infallible word of God, the Holy Bible, it doesn't matter. You have to know that God created good and evil and that God allows evil to exist. God allows evil to exist, if you believe in it. And the only thing that you have to back up that you believe that your creator is real is your faith. God allows, according to what religion you believe in, God allows for you and all of your senses, touch, feel, smell, taste, see, hear, all of those things, except for faith. But if I were to tell you that the Bible was created in the Council of Nicaea back in 325 AD to control the medieval times of Europe, 
for a time where people in Europe was unruly and there was chaos all over the land that these religious men got together and created a book to create a deity of higher power so people can revel and marvel over such great power to have all of these spokespersons to go out and say, you're going to hell. Well, what's hell? It's a bad place where people who do evil and bad things, well, what are evil and bad things? According to this law, according to the laws of the land, according to the Ten Commandments. And then if I was to tell you, if you're black, whether you got traded or stolen from your homeland, the continent of Africa, and brought to an immigrant created nation by Europeans, and that you were force fed Christianity down your throat through torture, through whip, through rape, through dismemberment, through hanging, through burnings. And that you and all your ancestors before you was forced to believe in a deity that was never created by the homeland you come from, but by a white nation. You tell me that you can go around and still close your ears and close your eyes and say, well, I know he's real. And I know the one question you have, and I'm going to say, what God are you asking me? I believe that there is a creator. I believe that there is a high power. But when you really break down Christianity and when you really break down all of these religious sects, you have to question it. See, everything in your life you question. You question everything. You question when you go out and buy a new house. You question when you go out and buy a, 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 a new car. You question when you're at Walmart and Target and all these places buying all these things. You question when you take your kids to piano lessons and Taekwondo and Jiu Jitsu and, 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 and all these other things. You question it, you question it, you question it. But when you get to church, you better not question the word of God. Tell me if that's controlling or not. And then at the end of the day, <laughs> why would your white slave masters give you the word of God for your salvation. For you can ascend to the heavens after you didn't work your entire life in captivity and enslavement. After they have raped your women, your men, and your children, and also had your children to have sex with their mothers and sisters so they can breed more slaves. Why would you take that infallible word of God to be the word of God? Why? See, the problem is, ladies and gentlemen, we don't understand how white supremacy operates. White supremacy operates in many different atmospheres in many different ways. I have people, I know people who understand white supremacy, but they don't understand white supremacy in a religious set. They don't understand white supremacy in a spiritual manner. Because as black Americans, we were 99% of us was raised as what? Christians. And they get you when you are small. Let's go to church. Let's pray. Let's go to church. Let's pray. Three years old, five years old, seven years old, 11 years old, 16 years old. You have more experience in religion than you do your job. And so when you have somebody on the internet questions your religion and break it down and make you think about it, no, you do. I'm gonna get the fuck off this damn video. I'm, he's a heathen. He's a devil worshiper. I'm gonna end this broadcast because you know what? He's saying things to me that's getting under my skin. He is saying things to me to make me doubt my faith. Here's the thing. Sheeps are led to slaughter. If you are made according to the Holy Bible, if you are made in the image and likeness of God, then he knows that he created you with an intelligent mind to question everything and to verify everything. If I punch myself in the face, well, I know pain exists. That shit hurts.
I am not telling you not to believe in what you believe, but I'm asking you just to define it. The origin, the substance, the evidence, faith, faith, believing in things that are not there. No, <laughs> faith, believing in things that are not seen. But you felt the power of God. See, here's the thing. I can easily have the contradiction of religion back and forth. They said, well, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. When you're about to do something bad, there's a voice. There's a conscience. Oh, wait a minute. A conscience. I have a conscience. Because from a small child, my parents told me that stealing was bad. Taking something from somebody that's not yours without asking is stealing. That's bad. To hit somebody unprovoked is bad. I'm just saying, I'm just a dude on the internet. I, don't, I may not know anything. I'm just a dude on the internet asking questions. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just a dude on the internet asking questions. I don't know. This is a bonus. I just want us to think about how white supremacy operates in many different realms. And then some of you are asking, well, if I don't have religion, if I don't have spirituality, if I don't have a, a, a Christ in my life, if I don't have Muhammad in my life, if I don't have Buddha in my life, what do I have? What do I have? Let me tell you something. I told you guys this uh, time before that I was an ordained minister. Remember when that guy that came out publicly and said that he left the church? His name was Kevin Wesley. I believe he still has a YouTube channel. He was a fallen pastor when they found out he stopped speaking about it against Christianity. He lost his job and this, that, and the other. And now, now he's wearing all these necklaces and robes. But anyway, when he first came out, people started to shun him and beat him up, try to go back and forth and debate him. I always tell people this. You want to debate me? You want to debate me about Christianity? Take away the Bible. Take away the Bible, because if you don't understand that God created good and evil, then we don't even have a conversation. God created good and evil. God allowed Lucifer to exist. He allows, if you believe this, I'm not saying I do, if you believe that the devil and demon and Lucifer is real, then the question you should have on top of all the things that else I talked about is why does he allow him to exist? And if somebody says free will, your God help you. Because <laughs> somebody, a preacher told me, well, well, Minister Ross, God doesn't destroy anything he has created. What? <laughs> God doesn't destroy anything he has curated. If you guys go to Malachi and you look up the story of that, this bald guy, uh, uh, is this bald guy. I don't know. I don't know that I used to know all of this stuff by heart. But basically, it was this bald guy in Malachi and these kids, about 40 kids, was jeering at, at him. And he prayed to God. And these bears came out of the uh, woods and slain the kids. Well, let's get some teaching right here. This is BibleHub.com. And we're going to read it. Let's read two of them. From there, Elijah went up to Bethel. As he was walking along the road, some boys came out of the town and jeered at him. Now, depending on where you guys are from, jeered means joning, talking bad about uh, what else they got? Uh, playing the dozens, jeered. Okay, was talking bad about him. Okay, cool. Jeered at him. Get out of here, baldy. They said, get out of here, baldy. 
and I'm bald. So I'm just saying, back at it. I'm gonna read one more verse. Elijah left Jericho and went up to Bethel. As he was walking along the road, a group of boys from the town began mocking and making fun of him. Go away, baldy. They chanted, go away, baldy. You guys with me? Stay with me. I'm almost done. You see what's going on, right? And this wasn't Malachi. I'm sorry. This is Second Kings. I was all off. Second Kings. Now, the next verse. He turned around, looked at them, and called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of the boys. Another verse. Elijah turned around and looked at them and he cursed them in the same name of the Lord. Then two bears came out the woods and mauled. <sighs> and he turned around and he saw them. He cursed them in the name of the Lord. And two she bears came out the woods and 42 of the boys. I rebuked them and called down curses on them. I beat some of these men, put out their hair. Then I made them take on an oath before God and said, you going to give your daughters. I mean, this is crazy. But God doesn't destroy anything. He's, I mean, he created. I mean, knowing he ought, did he not flood the world, which essentially destroyed the world? I'm not telling you to stop believing in your religion. I'm just saying, think about it. Because when I when I went through my seminary school, I read the Bible, the Torah, the Holy Quran, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Book of Enoch, the Book of Jasher, the Book of Mary, uh, the uh, the Catholics Lent. I read all of that, and I said, you know what? I'm done. I, I was ordained. I think I wrote a couple of sermons. I was ordained for about a year and then I renounced my ordination. I said, I'm done. I am done. Because when you saw learning the history, you saw learning about Vatican, you saw learning about the Knights nice Templar and all of the polluting and plundering and killing and raping they did. All in the name of the Pope, in the name of God, in the name of Christianity, and name this, that, and the other. And I know, I know, any religion can be perverse. Any religion can be twisted. But at the same time, any religion that's given to you by your slave masters, you should think one time, two times, three times, four times before you blindly and with faith as a mustard seed follow that religion. I'm just saying, I'm not saying don't follow it. I'm just saying maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe you should question it. Maybe. This is the Black Post. This evening, the message was delivered. No matter if you loved it or hated, I sent that damn message. I'm out.